In the previous video clip, we learned that folds form as rock bends deep in the earth. Sometimes, though, rather than bending, the rock breaks. Cracks in rocks are called joints. If there is movement along the crack, it's called a fault. So I've put the definitions here. A joint is a fracture that occurs in a rock due to stress, but there is no appreciable movement along the the fracture. In contrast, a fault is a fracture that occurs with a, in a rock due to stress, but there is movement. Vertical movement, horizontal movement, or both types of movement along the fracture. Your textbook lists four types of faults, but we're going to lump them into three main types. We're going to lump reverse and thrust faults together and simply call them reverse and thrust faults. So the three types of faults that we'll be studying are, first, normal faults, second, reverse and thrust faults, and third, strike-slip faults. And you'll note that there's two subtypes of strike-slip faults, right lateral and left lateral strike-slip faults. Here's a diagram from your book showing how they lump them into four different types. But again, we're going to have normal faults, reverse and thrust faults, which we're going to deal with together, and then strike-slip faults. Movement along faults can be horizontal, vertical, or both. We're going to see that different types of faults have different types of movements generally associated with them, but there's always exceptions. Faults also can be very large or quite small, and the movement along faults can be very slow, or it can occur suddenly. When we have a fault that moves suddenly, this is when we get earthquakes occurring. In the next few slides, we're going to learn to differentiate among the different types of faults by the different types of movements that is occurring. But before we get there, we need to get some terminology down. When we have a fault that goes vertically like this, the material on top of the fault line is called the hanging wall, and the material below the fault line is called the foot wall. Importantly, we're not talking about how high up the material is. We're just talking about the position relative to the fault line. So when we look at this line right here, perhaps it's even instructive to not look at the top or bottom of the fault line, just look at a part in the middle. And if you were imagining which side of the fault is on top and which side is below, in this case, the right-hand side is on top of the fault line, and the left-hand side is below. So the right-hand side is called the hanging wall, or sometimes called the head wall, and the part on the left here is called the foot wall. Another way of thinking about it is if you were to walk along this fault, which clearly this is just imaginary because you can't do this, your feet would be walking on the foot wall, and your head would be up near the hanging wall. Pause the slide here and make sure that you can fully understand how you can tell the difference between a hanging wall and a foot wall. Here's another diagram. Study the diagram and convince yourself that the block on the right is the head wall or hanging wall and the block on the left is the foot wall. Again, don't look at the topography. Sometimes it's helpful to just look at one small part of the fault, perhaps near the middle where the arrows are. Focus on that black line and determine which side is on top and which side is below. So in this case, the side on the right is the hanging wall and the side on the left is the foot wall. As the slide title shows, this is a normal fault. What has happened to the hanging wall relative to the foot wall? Fill in the blank here. Has it gone up or down? Hopefully you noted that the hanging wall has slipped down relative to the foot wall. Some have suggested that that's the reason it was named a normal fault. This downward movement along a slope is the normal result you would expect simply due to gravity. What type of stress would cause this? Compressional stress or tensional stress? Well, what would happen if you compressed these two sides together? the hanging wall would actually go up, right? 
So in this case, a normal fault is a response to tensional stress. The rock units are being pulled apart, and as a result, the hanging wall slips down relative to the foot wall, creating a normal fault. The landform that forms as a result, this mountain range here, is called a fault block mountain. Interestingly, it's not necessarily true that this area was pushed upward, but rather simply the hanging wall slipped down relative to the foot wall, creating a difference in topography here that we call a fault block mountain. I encourage you to stop the video and study the diagram again to make sure that you get it. You should be able to, to show that the hanging wall is falling down relative to the foot wall. You should be able to clearly understand that this is a result of tensional stress. And you should be able to show how fault block mountains are made. Also, in terms of plate boundaries, where might you expect to find a lot of normal faults? Near what type of plate boundary? And why? The answer to that last question has to do with the type of stress. Tensional stress is a pulling apart. What type of plate boundary has a pulling apart as the major stress? Next, let's look at reverse and thrust faults. Study both of these diagrams, and in each diagram, figure out which side is the head wall and which side is the foot wall. Then figure out what the general motion is of the head wall relative to the foot wall. Pause the video and do the tasks I just described. Hopefully you were able to see that in both diagrams, the left side of the diagram was the head wall that's on top of the fault. In the lower diagram, it's very easy to see because the, the fault is at a very low angle. So the left side here is clearly on top of the right side. When the fault angle is more towards vertical, it's a little bit harder to figure out. Again, I always, rem rem I always suggest that you try to pretend that you're walking on the fault and your feet would be on the foot wall. So in each case, what's happening to the head wall or hanging wall relative to the foot wall? Hopefully you noted that in each case, the hanging wall is moving up relative to the foot wall. Indeed, this is what makes it a reverse or thrust fault. The hanging wall moves up relative to the foot wall. Does this make sense? Follow the motion in each diagram. Also note that the only real difference between a reverse fault and a thrust fault is the angle of the fault. Reverse faults are high angle faults greater than 45 degrees, and thrust faults are low angle faults, less than 45 degrees. Both of these faults form from the same type of stress. What type of stress would cause these faults to form? You can look at the arrows on the diagram here, but hopefully you could figure it out on your own as well. Compressional stress is what causes both reverse and thrust faults. When the when the compressional stress pushes these rock units together, the hanging wall slides up relative to the foot wall. Study each of these diagrams again to make sure you get it. And also think about where you might expect to find a lot of reverse and thrust faults in terms of plate boundaries. What type of plate boundary has a lot of compressional stress? Hopefully, you said convergent plate boundaries, and it's true. We can find reverse and thrust faults near all types of convergent plate boundaries, OC, OO, and O. Hopefully, you said convergent plate boundaries, and indeed, we can find reverse and thrust faults near all three types of convergent plate boundaries, OC convergent, OO convergent, and CC convergent. Normal reverse and thrust faults are all a bit similar in that their dominant notion, motion is vertical. For our third type of fault, strike-slip faults, the dominant motion is horizontal. 
Study the diagram here and note that the rock units are simply sliding past one another. There are two types of strike slip faults right lateral strike slip faults and left lateral strike slip faults. On the diagram here, position yourself on the block on the right hand side. Put yourself pretty close to the fault, perhaps on this stream here. As it look as you look across the fault, what direction does it look like the other block moved? Well, you can see the stream used to line up, so it looks like the other block moved to the right. Now put yourself on the other side of the fault and look across. Again, what direction does it look like the other side moved? Hopefully, you again said to the right. Thus, this diagram shows an example of a right lateral strike slip fault. If you were to reverse the big white arrows, you can see that that would create a left lateral strike slip fault. Which type of strike slip fault do you think the San Andreas Fault is? You can see the San Andreas Fault running the length of California, and it accommodates the Pacific plate moving to the northwest relative to the North American plate. So stand over here and look across. It looks like it's moving to the right. Similarly, if we look at a picture from, uh, of the real portion of the fault, here's the fault right here. This stream system used to run straight across, but now it's offset. If we look across the fault, it looks like the other side moved to the right. So yes, the San Andreas Fault is an example of a right lateral strike slip fault. Here's another example. Is this a strike slip fault or a normal or reverse or thrust fault? Well, from the title of the slide, you can see that it must be either a normal or, or reverse fault. But why, right? Strike slip faults have mainly horizontal motion, and this fault appears to have vertical motion. So it must be either a normal fault or a reverse or thrust fault. But which kind is it? Can you tell which side is the head wall and which side is the foot wall? Pause the video and check it out. Here's the fault. So the head wall or hanging wall is the part on top of the fault and the foot wall is the part below the fault. So what's happening to the head wall in this case? Hopefully said that the head wall is slipping down relative to the foot wall. Since the head wall is slipping down relative to the foot wall, what type of fault is it? Hopefully you said it's a normal fault. And then you went one step further to say this is in response to tensional stress. Let's give another example. The Basin and Range Province of the United States encompasses most of Nevada, a little bit of Northeast and Southeast California, some of Arizona, and Utah. In the Basin and Range Province, we have this set of linear mountains that runs throughout the state. And there's also a whole bunch of faults. So what type of faults make up the Basin and Range Province? Let's take a look. It doesn't really matter which fault we choose, so let's just pick this one here. This fault here has the head wall on the left side and the foot wall here on the right. What's happened to the head wall? It slipped down relative to the foot wall. When the head wall slips down relative to the foot wall, we have a normal fault. Similarly, on this side here, the right side is the head wall and it slipped down relative to the foot wall. Indeed, all the faults in this region are examples of normal faults. These normal faults result from tensional stress and they result in a set of linear mountain ranges, fault block mountains, throughout the state of Nevada. I highly encourage you to watch the fault videos embedded in your ebook or in Mastering Geography. Also, stop the video clip here and make sure that you can answer these learning check questions.